I'm on now. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Robert Getz. I'm with the Florida Small Business Development Center. We operate in all 67 counties in the state of Florida. And first of all, I want to thank the uh, State Department of Emergency Management for recognizing a couple of years ago, and, and this took several years of, of battling and fighting and, and uh, doing what we often do, uh, I want to thank the Department of Emergency Management for recognizing business and industry and giving us uh, status at ESF 18, Emergency Support Function 18, which distinctly recognizes that there is a business function required for any community to fully recover and return to normalcy. What we do at the Florida Small Business Development Center, we operate statewide here in Indian River County. We're at Indian River State College, no longer Indian River Community College. We've grown up, uh, but we work with the small business community, work with owners and managers, and as I look around the room here, I'm going to guess, let's see, 90% uh, of the room is employed, there's 10% unemployment across the country, 90% of you either are working as employees or employers. And while much of the work that we do is targeted at employers, small to mid-sized companies, those of you that work for a company that are not, you're not aware of a plan of action, a disaster plan. And let me clarify what a disaster plan for a business is. It's a little bit different than the family disaster plan. The question for you to ask as a business owner or an employee is in, in the heat of a, a catastrophe, an issue, anything that disrupts business, do you know the role that you play? Do you know the distinct function and role that you occupy? Do you know protocol? If you don't, then the alternative is uh, kind of panic, and that's not an option. I'm one of those, when I check into a hotel, I look on the back of the hotel room door, not to see what the full rack rate is that the hotel would like to get, but I want to know what the exit plan is. I want to know what the emergency plan is for that hotel. And I do the same thing when traveling in an airplane. I pay attention to that flight attendant in the aisle pointing out the signals and, 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 and telling, here's the plan of action if we have to vacate the aircraft. As important as a plan is, it's totally useless if it's not practiced. So let me, uh, let me kind of run through why we, and I'm still a little uh, uneasy because we still have statewide only one out of three businesses that have a disaster plan, a business continuity plan that's in place and has been tested. And that disturbs me because that tells me that two out of three are not prepared. So those of you that are here today, if you, if you are aware of a business, if you work for a business and there's no plan, at the end of my presentation you'll see several sites uh, uh, where you can download a template and put a basic plan together. Uh, here's what a plan does for you, though. It identifies the critical supplies that you need in the event of an emergency, and these are your basic first aid supplies. It identifies a safe and secure place where you might need to retreat. And if you're a one-person home-based business, and that is a large percentage of businesses throughout the state of Florida these days, uh, th 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 that's going to be pretty critical to know where to retreat to and where you can operate. It will minimize your investment, it will minimize your loss and protect your investment. The goal, and the only goal, is to reopen as quickly as possible. And while you might not be fully functional at full capacity, you need to understand what your critical processes are, and if you're operating at 50 or 60 percent, that's great. Uh, we've heard quite a bit in recent months about influenza, flu, uh, H1N1 virus, and th there's, uh, in some of my presentations and workshops, I'll show a cartoon that shows you're a small business owner, what happens if half of your workforce reports sick? And if you have a workforce of four people, that's two people out. 50% of your capacity is lost. Are those the ones that are productive? Is there duplication of their services? Again, the goal here is to reopen and get back to business as quickly as possible. How many of you are prepared to vacate your office at the knock, of, at somebody knocking at the door and saying, wildfires are down the street, you need to, you need to leave now. You got five minutes. A good business disaster plan will have, and I travel 
sometimes with a, a, a case, a wood, not wood, a plastic airtight waterproof case that has all my valuable records and critical documents in it. The question is, what if we lost internet? Could you operate your business? Power goes down regularly here in Florida that we know, and, electric, and uh, internet goes down occasionally, but what if we lost internet for a period of time? Could you operate your business? Not at 100% capacity, but in one way or another. You can if you maintain good records and you can identify the critical information. It is a great way during any disaster, man-made or natural, to understand your customer base and understand that it's a great way to reconnect with them. Uh, I'm describing the records to go box. It's a critical, critical information that I have packaged in a box that if I had no internet, if I had no electricity, I could operate for a period of time. Uh, the ESF 18, Emergency Support Function 18 that I described earlier is business and industry in Indian River County. If you are a business owner or if you have critical supplies or equipment or, or something that could be utilized immediately after a disaster, you're encouraged to contact, and I hope I'm not getting in, in trouble here, but you're encouraged to contact the Emergency Operations Center, am I correct? And, and report, I, I've got three earth-moving pieces of equipment. I have 10 people that are construction laborers and they have chainsaws. And they could be dispatched and relocated to an area of critical need. Let me get back to small to mid-sized business owners because that really is, is what Florida is about, small to mid-sized employers. The critical issue during a hurricane or tornado or any disaster is the cash isn't coming in. You're not open for business or you are open but the road is taken out, flooded out and there's no customers coming in. Cash is not coming in and we are keenly aware of this. And for that reason alone, immediately after any declaration, the state of Florida has bridge loans up to $25,000 that are made available. They are I, I, they're not handed out freely. They still require the documentation and the financial records. And that's why in, in, it is so critical to have good records and a good plan and be able to demonstrate this is what we did during the month of September or during the second week in September of 2005. You've got to have that documentation. documentation. <clears throat> And the same applies to the Small Business Administration, and much of, what we, uh, what, much of what we do at the Small Business Development Center works hand-in-hand -hand with FEMA and the Small Business Administration disaster personnel, specifically facilitating the loan process, getting the money, that disaster loan, to you, the business owner, as quickly as possible. We do much of what we do in the form of one-on-one -on -one consulting, totally free, completely confidential. And if you look at the upper right-hand corner of the slide, you'll see the 38-foot RV, of which Small Business Development Center operates two of these, and they are designed to go on site immediately after a natural or man-made disaster. If there were a tornado or hurricane that had hit this area in the past couple of days, we would take that vehicle with the permission of, of city and county personnel and the emergency operations enter and pull that alongside city or county commission. The side goes out, we've got antennas that go out, we have laptops on board and all the FEMA paperwork to actually process the documentation required by Small Business Administration to get the loans moving as quickly as possible. I think I have one more slide here and I, I've simplified it because there are numerous other websites that you can link to from either of the two websites that you see here, uh, floridasbdc.com and sba.gov, and both of those have links to disaster and hurricane preparedness that have a wealth of additional information. But to strip it down and really peel this back to the most simplistic critical elements, it is have a plan that allows you to communicate with your key stakeholders. And your key stakeholders will always be employees, suppliers, creditors, and, and, and shareholders, stockholders, if, if you're publicly owned. And test the plan. Again, the Small Business Development Center offers free advice one-on-one. -on -one. 
We also, and, and this time of year we're particularly busy because we critique and review disaster plans that you've written using templates that we are providing, and we tell you where they're lacking and what could be, uh, what could be done to make them stronger, more airtight, no, ten and pun, no t pun intended, uh, and, and, and a little more credible. Yeah. And I, I want to thank you for inviting me today as well, and this is, this is just information that is uh, way too critical for all of us to understand. Might as well. My name is Doris Slinger and I'm the Health and Safety Director for the North Treasure Coast Chapter in the American Red Cross. And I guess you're saying, well, health and safety, why is it not disaster? Well, our disaster director is sitting in the back of the room, Sharon Rayner, as is our CEO. Um, and amazingly enough, that's half of our staff of Indian River County. Indian River County has six people in the Red Cross office. Now, if we are going to be working in shelters and doing all the things that we're doing, we need a whole lot more people than six people. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. I do have, before I get to that, health and safety, what does that have to do with disaster? Well, if I remember back to the first slide, I think that you saw, you have the homes that are destroyed, but while you're getting your homes ready to protect them, somebody falls off the roof putting those shutters on. Somebody has a heart attack. And all of us need to be prepared to handle those emergencies as well. You need to know what to do if somebody has a heart attack. You need to know what to do if all of a sudden that saw that you were cutting the wood to board up your window slips. So I hope everyone is prepared that way as well. It's called preparedness. And one of the handouts I have that you can pick up when you go out, it's the only one actually, and if you'll flip the slide for me please, that's it right there. Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. Be informed. Let's get the kit. Do you have a first aid kit as part of your, I know we get our food, we get out and we make sure that we have all those things, but make sure that you've looked at your first aid kit and that it's not band-aids that are 10 years old and not ready for anything and that you have everything that you need. So along with that, I'm going to keep this short because they've pretty much that's what's nice about all the gentlemen here kind of covered everything that I would talk about. Making those plans. Making sure that you don't wait till the last minute to leave, you know, make your plans as to where am I going to go. You don't want to wait when the storm's here and all the traffic's on I-95 and you need to let your family know. You need to have that one contact person. Text them. You can say I'm okay. It's that one person that's out of the area that you can let know. And as I said, they've all kind of filled in everything that was on this paper, so I get an easy job. Um, how do we stay informed? You know, those websites and things, well, I know that our disaster director, as well as our CEO and myself, we're constantly monitoring the weather. I mean, Sharon could probably tell you exactly what's happening out there and what's expected today, because we know what's coming. Are we preparing? Well. It's time to get ready, right? June 1st, start of heart decay season. It's time for all of us to get ready. We are getting ready all year round. We don't stop getting ready. We are always making sure that our shelters are going to be prepared with what they need. We need to make sure that we have enough shelters if this storm lasts longer and we have a lot of people who are out of their homes and we need long-term shelters. We need to make sure that we have those in place. We need to make sure that we have all the supplies needed that we might need to be able to help everybody. We can't wait until June 1st to say, okay, let's go get everything we need. Let's get all those volunteers that we need. Let's make sure every volunteer that we have knows what they do. Because we can't say, okay, there's the shelter. Go open it. They need to be trained. So we are working all year round on getting ready. We don't stop. It slows down a little bit from maybe... November to January. We get a chance to get a little bit of a holiday in there, but that's, that's pretty much it. it it's constant. It, it's not a time to stop. Um, I can't say enough about just making sure you do everything that all of these gentlemen said. Uh, and again, I'm going back to, and I want to leave you with this thought, we can't do it alone. None of us 
can do it alone. As we said, we need to work together as a team. But we especially, if we're going to be able to help our neighbors and our friends and our family, we need to working together as a team. Six of us in Indian River County are not going to be able to do it. We need volunteers. I know it's difficult for people to volunteer uh, because we're all, a lot of us are all working and it's hard to get out and after a hard day at work. But remember that in most cases when we need you, you might not be working anyway because the storm's coming. So we can use you in the shelter and then you can go back to work. Uh, I came to the Red Cross as a volunteer. Uh, I'm not, today I'm a staff member, but my husband is a volunteer. Uh, I have believed in it. I think we all need to be able to help each other. And this is one way of doing it. We train you. We have great programs and great education. Um, and just make that plan. Get your kit. Be informed. And we'll be fine. And we're not going to have any of this year, right, gentlemen? Thank and again, you. we thank you also for having us. Uh, <clears throat> The thing that didn't show up yet, so I'll just run over a, a quick thing that they had, which would be a little bit redundant, but better to repeat something once than to leave something out. And then I'll ask Catherine if she'll come forward when I'm finished with the remote microphone. And if anyone in the audience has a question, Catherine will bring you the microphone and we can all hear the question. You can direct it as you like. Um, I want to point out uh, we were joined by Sebastian's mayor, uh, Mayor Gilmore. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, our other office, uh, service person was out in the office still signing people up and when I introduced him before and so I want to recognize Pam Gillespie. Pam. Okay. <coughs> and I want to remind everyone uh, there's quite a, a substantial number of handouts in the lobby where you came in. They might not have been there when you when you arrived but they're there now and, and we invite you to pick them up from tracking charts to to check off list. Uh, some of the things that FEMA uh, check off list has on of course they know the safest places in your home Every, every place in your home isn't as safe as another place. Obviously, everybody knows stay out from in front of plate glass windows uh, if they were pre the 2001 windows. Uh, know the different routes to get out of your home safe. You know, food and water, as they said, uh, for a minimum of three days. Flashlight, uh, battery powered radio, we heard that, first aid kit, personal medical and sanitation items. Uh, the personal to go box, uh, I don't know how many people here saw pictures of uh, Homestead after the Hurricane Andrews. Anybody see that? Raise your hand if you had. Okay. I mean, it, it looked like Hiroshima. Some areas, absolute total devastation. Ground level, nothing left standing. Pets gone. You know, I don't, still don't know if they have a veterinarian there. It blew all the pets away. It put everybody out of business, put everybody out of a home in some of those areas. So. You know, it wouldn't be real smart to leave your insurance policy and your checking account numbers and all that kind of stuff back at home, even in a waterproof rack. You want, you want to have that stuff on your body uh, at all times if you leave or, or if you may have to leave. Uh, <clears throat> know how to communicate with your family, obviously, if you're separated. And, and you should have that anyway, notwithstanding hurricanes. Just everyone in your family should know if your communications are ever cut off, how you're going to reach them. Uh, if you physically have to meet up somewhere, where you're going to meet up. All the Congress people are required to have a plan like that just for daily stuff, much less when we, when we know natural, nat natural disasters may be on the way. Uh, be more than a survivor, no CPR. Um, identify a person to contact uh, your family uh, who will call you or you can call them a, a mutual person from between both your families. Triangulate your communications is a good idea. And you know, once you know your family's safe, of course, be a good neighbor and then check on your neighbors. Uh, see if see if they're okay or how you can help them. And I will leave off the others. Catherine, if you will bring the microphone down, we'll see if we have some questions. Anybody have a, ra raise your hand and then Catherine will b bring the microphone to you so we can all hear your questions. No Catherine. If there's a mandatory evacuation, who will announce it and how far out will the storm be generally? 
I can answer that question. Normally, when we have mandatory evacuations and we're talking about hurricane preparedness here, 